Hey everybody, this is the 2016 Kia Soul. It competes in the compact crossover segment. Uh, some of its main competitors is going to be the Nissan Juke and the uh, Mini Countryman. But uh, this is a car that first came out back in 2008, the first generation. The one you're looking at right now is the second generation Soul. It came out in uh, 2014. So it's still pretty recent. Uh, as you can see, it is kind of a little bit of a box on wheels, but overall, this is one hell of a small little crossover. Oh, and uh, I want to thank uh, Kia Marin in the San Francisco Bay Area for letting me come and film here today. So let's get to it. Now, looking at the Soul's exterior design here, I mean, this is a really nice looking car. Uh, going into some of the details here, you can see that the design team here really put a lot of attention to these chiseled lines, look above the wheel arches, uh, the front lighting, the front grille, it all just looked very mature. Compared to the first Soul, it was um, a little more youthful looking, but I think this Soul, uh, the second generation, has come a long way in a very short amount of time. Now, if you remember uh, Kia's back uh, just maybe 10 years ago, they were very boring looking Econa boxes, but that's all changed. Now, uh, Hyundai and Kia, or Hyundai is uh, Kia's sister company, It's uh, the head designer is a guy named Peter Schreier. Now, he used to work for Volkswagen back in the 90s, and his previous uh, works included the first generation Audi TT and the, uh, and the new Beetle, which came out in about 1998 or 99, I believe. But his talent is, is everywhere. He brought that uh, very crisp, clean German-like styling to Kia and Hyundai as well. And the results speak for themselves. I mean, it, it, it's a sharp-looking car. It definitely gets stares. Uh, it's, it's certainly matured from the first generation. And uh, so far, I, I can't really find a bad angle. Under the hood here, you have a, uh, a 2.0 liter engine. Now, this is the optional engine. It comes in the uh, Exclaim trim, which is the highest trim model that you see here. This 2.0, it is uh, naturally aspirated. It has uh, 164 horsepower and 151 pound-feet of torque. The, uh, the base engine is actually a, a, a 1.6 liter engine. Uh, it only has somewhere around 130 horsepower and 118 pound-feet of torque. Uh, if we're up to me, I would try to go for the 2.0 liter. You're gonna get a little more power, uh, and especially when a, a car of this size, while it, it's not exactly big, the whole uh, idea of a, of a crossover, whether it's compact, midsize, or large, is to have enough space to, to haul some stuff around, and, and, and I think the bigger the engine, uh, the better you're gonna be. And uh, the, the, the power jump from the 1.6 to the 2.0, you're going to feel it. And overall, the, uh, the Soul comes with uh, a really nice aesthetic feel, even down to the wheels here. These, you, know, you get these 18-inch wheels. I believe 16-inch are standard. You can also offer 17-inchers, but uh, these 18-inch wheels are they're really nice. It, uh, they're, they're not offensive, but overall, it, it looks really solid. And compared to that, that the original Soul, this one uh, definitely has a little bit of a boxier look. Now, people are always going to compare the Soul to the Nissan Juke, and looking at the Nissan Juke, I, I, I think its proportions are just a little off. I think the Soul is a little more handsome looking. Uh, especially as we uh, as we step inside here, the uh, overall layout here in this Kia is just really, uh, really nice. It's it got this really nice premium feel. I mean, looking at those old Kias, they were it was just this very sort of basic uh, design, but here everything is is seriously upgraded. I mean, I was just blown away by the overall interior quality compared to. General Motors, even just a few years ago, they had those hard plastics, front and back. But here, Kia has gone all the way with soft touch materials. Even in the back seat, uh, I felt all the door handles, the armrest was it, it felt solid, and that is really nice to see in in a, in a car in this class. It's it's not a a very 
stylish uh, or quirky layout, like let's say compared to the uh, to the Nissan Juke again. Uh, you're going to have uh, a nice large infotainment screen here. I believe this one is 4.3 inches. Your basic steering wheel here, you're going to have uh, the typical buttons for cruise control, audio, Bluetooth. Uh, pretty much every single car these days comes with uh, buttons on the steering wheel. I, I think the only car not to is, let's say, the Porsche 911. That's uh, Its steering wheel is button-free, and that's something enthusiasts like. But here today... This is a Kia. These are the features people want. Very nicely laid out. And with that engine that uh, you heard, it's it, it sounds okay. It's it's a it's a four cylinder. You're, it's not a Ferrari, uh, not even close. So it's not going to get that nice growl of a supercar. But this is clearly not a supercar. And uh, the Soul also comes with uh, that start stop. Uh, this is a you know a, a premium feature in in this in this particular model here, the Exclaim, which also comes with a premium package. But I think uh, you get uh, some really nice features within uh, this price range, that infotainment screen, the nav system you're looking at here. It's very clear, it's concise. Uh, it's not too small to press the buttons. I didn't have a, a hard time doing it at all. Now, just a few years ago, uh, there was a lot of problems with these infotainment systems. Ford had a, what they called a sync system that a code developed with Microsoft. And that system rebooted on a regular basis. Uh, Ford had a lot of problems with it. Dealerships had a lot of problems with it. And overall, customers were not at all happy. But automakers, specifically Kia here, they've, uh, they sorted that problem out. I did not experience any problems. It was a very clean and uh, smart system. It functioned uh, everything that it needed to do, uh, specifically with the audio controls here that you can also... Uh, uh, can be done through the knob and, th and traditional buttons, and I like that combination. I think there's some uh, some other cars where the the entire audio system is on the uh, on the flat panel screen, uh, which it works for some people. I, I like this mix. Uh, when I say flat panel screen, I'm also referring to let's say uh, the Tesla Model S, where that's just completely state of the art. It's literally a, uh, an iPad uh, tablet. This is a uh, six-speed automatic transmission. You can get the Soul with a uh, six-speed manual if you like in the base model. Uh, I think most people are going to want to go for the uh, for the automatic, but if you want to uh, have a decent manual and throw that around uh, and throw your own gears, that's going to be uh, an option for you there as well. Now, my premium Soul here also has the uh, the ten-way power seats uh, for the driver's seat, and it, it's very easy to find a seating position, and it's. It's a really nice feature. You can get your phone in there with the USB port. I had no problem fitting my iPhone into the into the slot there. Of course, you always have a couple of cup holders. That's standard. Uh, uh, they're also in the rear seat. Uh, just a few years ago, not all cars really had real cup holders, which is really shocking. Uh, it's all here now. Uh, you have plenty of storage space in, in, in the sole here. You have that storage, uh, that, that center console bin. You can put a pair of sunglasses here. Ah, and this is this is undoubtedly my favorite feature. This is a panoramic sunroof, a premium feature, obviously. But it, it's incredible how Kia managed to get this into a car in this price range. Now, just a few years ago, it was only the German premium brands or, or Lexus, uh, BMW, including BMW, Audi, Mercedes, that had these panoramic sunroofs. But here it is in a compact crossover for $27,000, all in. That's incredible. And, and that's, I think, one of the, the, the Soul's best attributes here is that it's, it's premium. It's what I don't like to brand affordable luxury. These, uh, the, the steering wheel here, it is, it's leather wrapped, it's heated. The, the seats, they're black Napa uh, leather. Uh, they're uh, ventilated uh, and they have uh, uh, heating and cooling. 
it's just a, a, a wonderful overall uh, packaging here. Now, Kia is also really good at coming up with some really kind of uh, quirky features that would make a car that would normally be kind of boring, not boring. You have uh, something called this instant atmosphere uh, audio or lighting system that uh, the, the lighting actually adjusts to the, to the audio music that you're playing at the same time for sort of like an in interior light display. It's a really, really cool feature. But again, it's just, I, I just can't get over the build quality. Uh, just a few years ago, I was in a Kia, and I, and I didn't think it was anything spectacular. But even these uh, those uh, chrome uh, uh, door handles there, they didn't feel like cheap plastic or anything. But when you're going to, if you're considering buying the Kia Soul, you need to remember that it, it's not what they call like an SUV. SUVs are uh, body on frame construction. Uh, this is unibody. It's front wheel drive base. Uh, body on frame means it's typically rear wheel drive standard, four wheel drive uh, you can kick in. Uh, this is not going to do anything off road, nor is it meant to. And if you're looking for something like a crossover, but you want uh, all wheel drive for an example, you also have options such as the Ford Escape, the Subaru Forester. But the Kia Soul is is more for uh, city dwellers commuting but uh, no matter where I went I, I was always getting really positive looks in this car the, the front headlights are LED units same goes for the rear and and a lot of people actually comment on how much they they like that rear taillight design which I I really like I, it's really cool how it sort of wraps into or molds into the body now clearly it's not for everybody but I appreciate the fact that Kia uh, under Peter Schreier took a, a design chance and I think it's really paying off. And as far as interior space goes, uh, sitting in the front seat, I was completely comfortable. It doesn't have the 10-way electronic power seats. It's manually controlled, which is just fine. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that in the third generation, so whenever that comes out, that uh, the interior, or I'm sorry, the uh, the front passenger seat will also be electronically controlled. Just give it, just give Kia a few more years. And uh, when I was in the back seat, again, it, I'm about average height. Uh, I felt just fine. The uh, the the headrests there, they're uh, they're adjustable. So no matter what, you can find plenty of comfort. Three people can sit in the, uh, in the back. There's a, a center roll uh, uh, armrest. And then uh, going into the trunk space. Now, this is probably one of the best things about the Soul. Uh, you have more than enough space to do whatever it is you need to do around town. Uh, underneath the carpet, you have these, these nice dividers here. So nothing will roll over and crush something that you don't want it to. It's just part of smart design. And like many cars, there are 60-40 uh, split folding rear seats to increase the cargo space. Uh, putting all my camera equipment into the back, you can see just how much space is available to you. Uh, and that's not even going into the, the rear uh, or back seat area. It's just a, a very well designed and packaged car. Now the the car you're looking at, the, the Exclaim with the premium package, uh, retails for around uh, $27,000 with destination. But the base Kia Soul uh, starts off at just over $16,000. Again, that's with the 1.6 engine. Uh, but if you're just gonna drive around town, that car is more than good enough. But if you want all the nukes and crannies, the Kia Soul Exclaim with the premium package is a fantastic bargain. It's affordable luxury, a great price. The fuel economy is also very good for that 2.0 engine. It's got 24 miles per gallon in the city, 31 on the highway, and a combined 27 miles per gallon. Uh, the Soul also got a five-star crash uh, safety test rating from the U.S. government. So overall, 2016 Kia Soul, fantastic compact crossover. I liked it better than Nissan Juke. I felt there was more space inside. I liked the styling better. Not quite as quirky, but uh, quirky, excuse me, but very stylish. And overall, just one hell of a good value. And I think that's exactly what uh, people buying these compact crossovers want, is value. The, the Mini Countryman, for example, that's $40,000 all the way in. This Kia Soul, 27 grand, affordable luxury. It's great. 
Thanks, everybody. Be sure to check out carbuzz.com for our full review and be sure to like us on YouTube. We'll see you next time.